Natasha, how did you choose your photographer? Our photographer chose us. She knew we were engaged. She was a family friend. And she said, I want to shoot your wedding. How about your wedding, Jean? So I chose my my wedding photographer because my friend Kwa recommended him at the time. Um, I just trusted his opinion and I did zero research, but uh, he's a professional and, you know, it, it, not a friend. So it worked out really, really well for me in the end. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you love your wedding photos. I do love my wedding photos. I've seen your wedding photos and they're gorgeous. Meeting with clients, I usually use your wedding as an example because I think that they are the epitome of a classic mm-hmm. wedding that's, that's right that's timeless and elegant right today we have Carlos Alvarado with us he is a photographer in the tri-state area and one of our resident photographers with live picture studios so we are going to discuss the photographer selection process why you choose one photographer over another things that you should think about Uh, choices, options that you would have. And then once you have booked your photographer, how to prepare for your wedding, the do's and the don'ts of the day. Welcome to our podcast. So you're engaged. Now what? This week's podcast, we have Carlos Alvarado. We're going to be asking him questions about what it's like to choose the correct photographer for your wedding, a good selection for you. And then once you have chosen your photographer, what the process will be like to prepare yourselves for your wedding. We'll get to post-production too, once the wedding is finished, how to select the photos and what that process will be like. Welcome, Carlos. Hi, guys. Hi, Carlos. Hello. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. (laughs) So you've been a photographer how long? I've been shooting for about 10 years. Okay. I've been strictly weddings? No, just I started out shooting anything I could shoot. Um uh my kids, um my kids toys, um anything. My first actual paid shoot was a uh, a baby shower. Um mm. I think I I made like 160 bucks off that shoot. It was um and like any artist, your first check you get to be paid for what you're passionate about is everything, right? It was insane to to think that I could get paid just to take pictures of, of an event that was going on. But I want to go back for just one second. What piqued your interest in photography? Like what started the whole Before thing? Before my daughter was born, I, I bought a camera and I was like, okay, I'm just going to take pictures of my daughter and that's going to be, that's going to be it. And that's how it started. And from there, it just grew into uh personal projects, shooting any family events. Um, and then I got asked to shoot a baby shower. And then that was my first paid job. And then from there, it just grew to what it is now. So is it like the whole science behind it? Or was there an, an emotional pull to it where you, you just loved freezing the moment? And what what about it like said to you, okay, I really want to pursue this. I want to see what else I could make out of this. I was always interested in just capturing whatever moment was happening in front of me. Um, in fourth grade, I had a point and shoot camera, not even a point and shoot. It was a disposable camera. And I remember going on a trip to uh, to Pennsylvania on a train and just capturing photos with that. Um, that particular camera I never developed and it's still in my possession somewhere. Oh, wow. So I'm sure the pictures don't uh, yeah. don't exist anymore. <laughs> but that's for me, that's the, the first memory I have of using a camera. Um, and then from that point up until I bought my first DSLR, I've always shot with a little point and shoot cameras, just uh, having fun capturing anything. Um, and then again, just when I purchased my first DSLR, that's when um, I never thought about doing this as a job. It was always for fun, um, but that's where it grew. Um, my interest started started peaking even more in, into into photography. Um, People that I knew that were telling me, hey, you know, you've you've got something here. Maybe you should try to proceed, you know, pursue it more. And 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 I did. And then I had help along the way. And um, and what was that help? Did you apprentice with anyone? Did somebody did. take you under their wing? Yeah, I had a friend at the time where he was he was doing this full time. He was like, come help me out. You know, um, take some pictures. I'll show you some lighting. I'll show you some you know uh, some photo tips. Um, and at that point, I, I started to get obsessed with um, with capturing images that I couldn't create. So I started um, 
I started learning about light. I started learning about composition. Um, I took uh, workshops, you know, YouTube, uh, books, just educating myself as much as I could to really understand the craft of capturing an image and being able to repeat it when I wanted to, not just getting lucky, pushing a button, which was what the first thing. I remember one of my first shots I, I took, I don't know how I captured it. My camera was on auto, but I loved how it looked. The, um, the lighting, the composition, everything was beautiful. And it was just, it was a bowl that my wife had on, on the windowsill with some balls in it, and I just shot it. And I was like, man, this is great. Um, let me take another picture. And I took another picture and it looked like crap because I couldn't recreate what I got lucky taking with that first shot. Um, you had to pull back and, and learn the fundamentals of how to control it. Yeah. And it took me a while because, I mean, getting into photography, you need to learn the basics, um, shutter, ISO, and aperture. And I didn't understand what they all meant and how they all work together. So for me, I, I started to learn and dig into it, and I, I kind of gave up because it was just too much for me to really understand the technical aspect of photography. But at one point, I was like, no, I need to learn this because I want to get better at it. I want to be able to capture what I see or what I see in my head. And I kept at it, kept at it. I spent a lot of hours, a lot of late nights, um, you know, learning it. And then at some point it all came together and I understood it enough that I could somewhat get the image that I wanted. Wow. Okay. So okay. it's it, a lot of studying, but then of course the experience comes into play. You, you like anything you need to practice to get better at it. So you've Definitely. been doing this for 10 years. Yep. You came into the wedding industry by choice or it found you? It, um, I was with a friend of mine who was, he shot a lot of weddings and he was like, Hey, why don't you come assist me on a wedding, bring your camera and, you know, just take some pictures and help me with lighting. And that was my first wedding. This was going back. Oh man, this is going back maybe f six years. And, um, ironically enough, it was the first wedding that I ran into live picture studios. And I, you guys had a crew there. I think we spoke about this also. Um, and that was my that was my first wedding that I shot. And it, it felt natural to me to be able to capture um, events that were happening. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I have I played sports for 18 years and um, the natural instinct that I had from playing baseball being able to see something that's going to happen before it happens prepared me, I feel prepares me for oh, a wedding. So, you know, just being, being ready for something that's going to happen before it happens. The spontaneity um, yeah. of everything and the energy. Yeah. So that to me really helps me out when, when I see something that's going to happen or I feel, you know, I'm, I'm getting myself ready for those shots and that, that particular wedding, it, um, you know, it all came together for me. And I was like, maybe I can, I can do this even more. I had fun shooting at the wedding. For me, it, it, didn't, it never felt like a job. It still doesn't feel like a job. But it was being able to capture moments that I know when these couples see these images later in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they're going to remember these moments. And that's what I love, you know, that particular wedding. I was able to capture that for them. And I was like, you know, I can do this over and over again. That's such an important position because you are you are their wedding photographer. So you will be part of their story for the rest of their lives. You're creating an heirloom for them to carry with them throughout the years. So that's a very important role. It definitely is. Um, you know, they may not remember my face, but they're going to remember the photos. And to me, that's, that's more important than saying, okay, uh, my photographer, you know, who was he 20 years later? I mean... My photographer, I've been married 16 years. I kind of remember what he looks like. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but I remember the photos that he took. And that's what I have after everything's said and done after a wedding. That's what you're left with. Th those are your memories because your your physical memories, you're going to remember them somewhat, but nothing that you have, you know, those tangible photos in your hands, that's what you're left with at the end of the day. How important is it to choose the right photographer? 
It's super important. I, I think you need to be able to click with a photographer with their personality. Um, how do how do they how do they uh, react or how do they handle situations? Because every wedding has its situations. Um, is a photographer gonna just flip out and something happens that he can't handle? Is he is he gonna run out or is he gonna stay calm and cool and collective? Because it's a it's a stressful day already for the couple. Um, you don't want to add any more stress. So being able to, you know, a photographer who is stressed but not show it to the couple, I, I think for me is really big. It's 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 definitely a for me it's a big point because me personally I'm I'm a real laid back kind of guy, but I still get what I need to get from my couples, and just showing them that. I can handle any situation that comes my way, I think puts them at ease. So how important is it for you to to get to know your couples to some degree prior to the shoot? Is that actually important for you? Or do you feel that you can just, um, you know, kind of show up and and do your job well, knowing them or not? You know, I've 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 done both. Okay. There's There's been times where obviously I have a lot of communication with my couples prior to the wedding. And then there's been other instances where I've been called last mm -hmm. minute and hey, I need you to cover this wedding because whatever happened. Um, and for me, it's not a problem because I, I can break the ice really easy with, with my couples now, whether they're, you know, willing to accept yeah, me. They're cool that, with it or yeah, not. That's right. a different story. But for the most part, everyone is, it has been great. Um, I'm able to establish a relationship right away and sort of get a feel for my couples and know what boundaries I can push with them um, as far as direction, being open with them. That's important, too, because not every couple has the same comfort level. No, not at all. I mean, I've had some couples where, you know, I introduce myself and sort of open up smiling, laughing, and I don't get that in return. And whether it's if they're stressed out, maybe because of their family or the bridal party or just things aren't going right. You know, my job at that point is to calm them down, relax them, let them know that I'm there for them, not to add any more stress, but to really take any worries, any stress they have, I'll, I'll take them on and, and handle those responsibilities and delegate them to the people that need to take care of that. So would you say day of that your biggest challenge would be um, calming couples down or would you say that it's it was something else? Some, I mean, th that is an important aspect, but I mean, th there's so much that goes on to a wedding to, to sort of just keep them calm and relaxed because the one thing I, I always stress to them and, you know, stress in quotes really, but is to let them know that if they're coming across worried about anything, it's going to show up in their footage. And that's the last thing I want them to remember when they're looking back at their photos is, okay, I remember what happened here because look at my face. So I always let them know you need to stay calm, relax, that's let's have some advice. fun. And let's just, let's make the best out of this day because whatever happens on that day, it's out of your control at that point. Um, so let me ask this question a little bit. I, I just want to talk about your style, right? quote unquote. Um, I've spoken to many wedding photographers over the years and I, I've heard different things. Some, some photographers will tell me, you know, every photographer has a candid style. You always have to get candid shots. Would you agree with that? Or would you say that, you know, that's not necessarily true? Like, you know, you go on a shoot and you are who you are and you apply it and that that's that. Um, I mean, my style, I've been asked this so many times too, and I've never given the same answer just because my style kind of you're a chameleon in your I, work you have to be you have to be because if um if you show up and you're trying to shoot one particular style it's it's not going to work for every wedding um you need to adapt to certain situations lighting um every room is going to be different um every every wedding the the weather is going to dictate how how you kind of shoot too so um me personally i love using hard lights i love shadows um, hard lights. Yeah. You bring these, you, you, you provide them. So hard lights, it's attached to your camera. Is it big? Is it small? Is it necessary? No. Well, hard light basically means, you know, a light with, without a modifier, pretty much. It's just think of, think about the sun. That's pretty much hard light right there. Okay. Um, but as far as lighting, yeah, I always bring my lights. I bring speed lights. Um, I need to be mobile on, on a wedding day. I need to be able to, to, to get from point A to point B 
really quick just because on a wedding day you don't have much time to uh to set up and really you know test lights um so at this point you need to understand your equipment you need to understand how it operates and get to that get to your photo as quick as possible so so technical knowledge is an absolute must in working with a photographer also the experience and the confidence level that you have because keeping your confidence and your composure puts them at ease. Definitely. During right. the day. Definitely. Uh, a wedding day is, it, it mostly is candid, right? Most of it is happening. Life is happening in front of our eyes and you're capturing it, the events as, as they're passing, except for this isolated part of the day. Is that right? Perhaps yeah. as bride and groom are getting ready, there's, a, there's more direction that can happen in this part of the day. And then when they're doing a photo session, this is, I would say, more controlled time where you are giving a, an immense amount of direction. You're actually able to create an, an, a vision and execute that with, your, with the photo. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Uh, there's a lot of direction, I would imagine, that is needed for a photo session because you're creating something that is not existing. Life is not happening in front of you right now. It is a little bit, but you're creating their wedding photos for them. So how involved are you in that process? And because I know from, from speaking to couples, a lot of couples like a lot of direction and some don't. <laughs> so that's a, that's a fine line. How do you handle that? And what's your style? You know, every couple is different. Um, and, and a lot of them, when, when we speak, they, they seem to get a little nervous and a little worried about direction because they know they're not models. Um, they know they're not professional models that know how to position themselves. What I typically do is I always let them know, I'm going to start you in a position that's comfortable, that's natural. And it's just the starting point. And after that, I kind of let them do their thing. I don't want them to be someone who they're not because when they look back at the photos, they're going to be like, that, that's not us. You know, for me, it's about them being themselves, being comfortable. I'll position them. I'll sit back and just let give them a little direction as to what to, you know, what to do. And they love it because, you know, at maybe the first couple shots may not feel or look natural, but after a couple shots, they just kind of forget that we're even there and um, they just become themselves. And whatever it is they do when they're home or they're out on a date, that's what I'm capturing at that moment. Now, some couples, they do want more of a stylized uh, photos and and I'm fine with that, too. Um, you know, and that's where I kind of position them and tell them what to do. And they that's what they're looking for as an end result. And that's what I give them. Let's talk about Pinterest. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, we have a lot to say about this. <laughs> Everyone plans their, their wedding on Pinterest. You have this image, you pull it, you want to recreate it. Yay or nay from your part? Is that helpful or is it counterproductive? You know, it, it's funny because Pinterest, I, I used to have my couples say, send me a board with all your photos and we're going to get to them. And um, it, I, a year later, I, I said, no more, no more, because they're looking at photos that, that were taken some like on the West Coast with this beautiful background, with this, you know, beautiful sunset or whatever the weather was in that photo. Or it's and, May absolutely, and their wedding yeah. is in absolutely Yeah, and January. it's something we can't recreate because, again, every, every wedding is unique with, with, with the with everything, the, the venue, the settings, whatever it is, the weather. Um, so, you know, if, if they're persistent and they're like, I need to send you this photo because I, I, I want this picture. I'm, then that's when I asked them, what is it that you want of that picture? Is it the pose? Is it the lighting? Is it, what is it? Because for me, um, I'm not that photographer who took that picture. You need to, you chose me for a reason because of my work. You need to trust me and let me do what I need to do on this wedding day to get your photos. Yeah, I think I have to say, you know, one of the biggest challenges, at least, I mean, I'm sure Natasha would agree with this when we meet with our clients is um, just the lack of knowledge. I mean, naturally, they're not they're not photographers. They probably this might be the first, maybe second time in their lives where they're going to be photographed professionally. Um, and there's this this fine line between setting the, you know, um, 
the expectations straight <laughs> and, uh, you know, not turning them away at the same time. But we get all the time, um, we choose Carlos. Can he do this? You know, we choose Nathan, but can he do this? And um, it, it's always pretty tough to, to try to, you know, okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Exactly what you just said. What time of year is this? Where is this picture? You know, this image being taken? Um, you know, what type of presets are being used in, in the post process and all that kind of stuff. So I think um, I I wish that that we could have right. Am I right, Natasha? Yeah. I, I, about creating a realistic right approach to right. the day. You know, being a realist because people have perceptions of you know it's it's if you've ever seen those posts on social media where it's like your reality and actual reality right, of, of right. what goes on and timing and timing what can be achieved you know um just so many uh um expectations that they have and they want everything done in just a, such a small amount of time and explaining time and explaining the pacing of a day that a photographer goes through and just bringing them into that day i said to a bride the other night um you know your feet are going to hurt Remember that right now. You've just been out running outside <laughs> for two hours taking photos. You might want to have something to eat and sit down for a second. You sure you want to jump right into the? Oh, that's right. She said, you know, that's right. so that's um, I think that's our biggest. Well, at least for me, I could say that's and my biggest challenge is is it realistic expectations, expectations and goals of timing? Yeah. And, and timing can make or break a day. Right. It definitely. You can. can you can be a phenomenal photographer as you are. But if you're given too little of time and you have a, a list of things to achieve in this little bit of time, you are either going to be rushed or eliminate a lot of the requests that the couple have, right? So let's talk about timing. Walk us through a perfect day and then walk us through a day. A very imperfect day. <laughs> that's right. A, a day that turned out to be a nightmare because it was not structured properly. Okay. So let's start off with the nightmare. I love nightmares. <laughs> um, timing on a wedding day is, is everything. Um, for the most part, most weddings, you know, end up running late for whatever uh, hair, makeup, um, limousine took the wrong turn and got lost for 45 minutes. This is all things that have happened to me. Um, so not having the, the amount of time that we're scheduled to have you know, really cuts back on what we can capture. Um, at that point, we're capturing what we call sort of like the safe shots, just the real, like, I don't, generic shots where we can't get really creative with our shots. Um, and then when the couple is expecting these, these shots because they see my portfolio and they're like, oh, we want something similar to this. And I don't have the time to create it because it's later in the day, we're losing sunlight, whatever it is. At that point, you know, I explained to them, look, we don't have time for this because the venue also is running on a certain time and we need to stick to that schedule. So, you know, timing is everything. And um, and I'm sure they're they're heartbroken on their wedding day. You know, uh, and nervous. They have so much going on. They, they are, especially when when they're running late because of things that are out of their control. You know, again, that's where I come in and I'm trying to keep them calm at this point. And I'm like, look, we're going to get great shots still. You just need to go with the flow and let's let's get what we need to get. Um, family is another big factor when it comes to timing. When a couple doesn't want to do a first look, that eats up into their cocktail hour. Um, what happens during cocktail hour? Everyone runs because they want they want to eat. And then at that point, we're trying to find family members or friends who, who are taking part of that photo session, and then we're losing time capturing that. So I want to pause you just for one second. Mm -hmm. So what Carlos is talking about, first look versus no first look, is when you're having all of your events in one location, you are planning your ceremony and your guests are going to flow right into the cocktail hour followed by the reception, we strongly advise, and any photographer worth their salt will strongly advise you to do what's called a first look, which if you don't know what it is, you would see each other prior to the ceremony and accomplish all of the photos possible 
uh, in a photograph in a photo session setting before the ceremony, so that when the ceremony is over, you can actually go and celebrate. <laughs> you can enjoy yourselves mm-hmm. and possibly catch up on some photos that you didn't get to. But it's not putting all the stress into this one little hour of cocktail hour. So timing, this is what we're talking about timing wise, is giving yourself the appropriate amount of time. So it relieves the stress. And right? I, I want to get like super specific just for one second, because I know that, you know, any of any of, the, of our couples that are listening, this is always a question that we get. And I'm going to just ask you right now. So um, one location, uh, how many hours would you say that reasonably you would like to have for their photo session? You ha- They have their first look moment. How much time do you want to have? Um, again, a, a lot of this depends on how big the bridal party is, how mm-hmm. how many different combinations of photos were taken with family members. Um, but ideally, minimum hour and a half mm-hmm. to two hours. An hour and a half is really pushing it. Right. Two hours is ideal. Um, I've had photo sessions that are that have been two and a half, three, four hours, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really it's take for you. It, do you. It's great. Do the couple for, stay with for, you, or do they get? No, they do. And you know, the one thing I I always let the couples know that a wedding day is work. There's a lot of work involved on their end because it's not just point and shoot with an iPhone. You know, we're, we're setting up shots. We're capturing images for them that we need time to set up. Um, and when we don't have the time, we can't capture those images for them. So having three hours for photos is great because we're able to relax the couple and also take our time going from one location to another where it's not like we're rushing, you know, when when the bride is in her high heels and she needs to get from one location to another. And, you know, it, it ends up being work. And at the end of the photo shoot, they are tired. I see their faces and I'm always That's constantly, right. I, I let mm-hmm. them know, let me know if you need a break, if you want to stop, because if it's up to me, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to stop because I'm here to get you as much as I can for your day. Now, um, what's your feeling on having multiple locations, multiple photo session locations in a wedding day? I don't mind that as long as we have the time. Time is everything. So if there's multiple locations, I'm completely cool with that. But we need to have the right amount of time to cover going from one location to another. Because you got to remember, it's um, it's not just showing up to the location. It's grabbing gear. It's setting up. It's, you know, it's going, walking to whatever location we're going to. So all that t- factors into mm-hmm. how much time we're we're spending there. And just piggybacking off that for one second, um, we get a lot of questions, particularly from our grooms when it comes to the getting ready time, you know, before the first look, she's here, he's there, he's with the guys, she's with the girls and, you know, they're getting ready to see each other. And a lot of guys want to cut it out That's completely right. That's because right. they don't like the idea of a stranger being in their space. That's right. With the guys hanging out. So talk about that, if you would. The groom. The yes. groom. We want to know about the groom's prep. Talk about the groom's okay. prep. What are you getting? I mean, <laughs> why is it important? <laughs> yes. The groom's prep is always much quicker than, than the bride's prep. Um, you know, we want to capture what? them. What? I yeah. can't imagine why. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, but not not every groom is the same. Um, some guys still haven't shaved. So these are all parts of the day that we want to capture, you know, shaving their face, shaving their head. Some guys are still taking a shower, you know, and. And for me, everything that happens on a wedding day is is important for me to capture because, again, this is every you know this is what they're going to remember from That's this right. day. Maybe not and the even, shower. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can make it cool though. That's the thing. Um, so uh, these are things that happen on the wedding day that you know maybe it's not important to them at that point when it's happening, but when they look back and they're shaving and their and their best man is applying uh-huh. the shaving That's cream on their point. face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are all moments that we want to capture. We want them to remember this. I just have like a beautiful image from you saying that. So you see, thank yeah. you for that. That's no, that's right. right. I, I never thought about it that way. Take too. those emotional moments. Yeah, yeah. And you make beautiful memories. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. looked at by the typically speaking by the by the couples as so technical. Um, and it's, I think it's our job to remind them of how emotional this, this time really is. And that brings the value 
to what it is that we're doing here. And that what you just said was great because I, I mean, I, I personally have never even thought about it that way either. It's just documenting exactly, you know, that's that's what it is. I mean, a lot of people don't don't see the value in it because they're just like, oh, it's just another regular morning that I'm, I'm putting my pants on, that I'm shaving, that I'm brushing my teeth. But for me, these are all little little things that happen throughout the day that are important to a photographer. To me, I need to capture that because, um, you know, that that little picture will make the album, you know, as part of your story for that day. I love that you just said part of your story because that's what we're doing. We're creating a story of of their most important day. Now, talk about bride prep. What happens there? Bride prep's a little bit more involving. Um, of course. <laughs> you know, the ladies need their time. But for me, it's um, my approach is, you know, coaching the bride before I even get there, letting her know what I need as soon as I walk in. Okay, so I'm a bride. Mm -hmm. Go. What would you say to me? Okay, so first thing I'm going to need from you is your gown, which obviously should be there, your shoes. Um, we would love the bouquet to be there, invitation, any details that are important to you for us to capture to tell the story of your day. I, I want to start with those items first because um, by the time that I, I arrive, you should be done with hair and makeup. And if not, you have a little wiggle room because I'm capturing your details. That's the first thing I want to capture. Once I wrap up with details, it's capturing the bride, um, hair, getting hair, getting makeup. And even if if you're done at that point, we, we can always reenact. And it's, you know, I don't need to capture the beginning stages of you without makeup, you know, up until you're ready. I'm sure that's what most brides prefer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then after that point, it's just capturing you or the bride with the bridesmaids, with, with, you know, mother, with the mother-in-law, whatever family members are there. And it's really just letting them be themselves, um, and capturing what's happening. And even if I set up certain shots, it's just a setup shot, whether they're toasting, whether they're, uh, you know, popping a bottle, champagne bottle, anything like that. You know, I just want them to be themselves and, and act how they would act as if I wasn't there. Do you have a preference of where bride prep takes place? Hotel versus venue versus home where they grew up? You know, for me, I don't have a preference. It's a space that, you know, the bigger the space or, you know, lighting is, is a big thing. Um, you know, windows having windows and, and, and those rooms are it's really big because flooded with natural light. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, I've had locations where I don't have any windows, so we've got to create our own light or use whatever light is in, in that room and still make it look beautiful and, um, and appealing. So that way, you know, she, she loves the photos. I'm always torn about getting ready at home to advise brides as well, because I think that there's a certain element of being connected to where you grew up and you have homes almost become a member of your family. So having that in your photos and your memories is really important. Same thing with your photos, Jeannie. You had awesome pictures and I got to see you in your bedroom. It, it, it was really special. And I would imagine that that would also be special for, for a bride. But it's a certain amount of stress as well. It's like you're having people coming to your home now and does everything look good? Is there lighting? How is it going to photograph? You have less control uh, you know, you just made me re remember uh, um, my mom stressed for like two months about painting the house because, yeah, like she said, I got two. That's all I heard every day. Paint the house, paint the house. She didn't paint the house. Um, <laughs> and the photos couldn't have been more beautiful. I said, see, that's right. And you would have had a completely different feeling had you read your card, had you I think so. I think so. Room. Yeah. There was a picture of my grandmother in my bedroom that I wanted. Ca like it just. Having it, at, having the prep at my home was definitely something that I planned. I did that on purpose. I wanted that. I knew that it would make me more comfortable. That's me personally. I do understand, though, that there are situations where logistically it just makes sense to be closer to the venue. My day was a little bit more stressful because I live in Staten Island and then my venue was in, in New Jersey and I was jumping around all over the place that day. It extended the hours of my day tremendously. But it was worth it for me just to be able to feel less guarded initially, you know, um, when my pictures are being taken. 
and less to pack as well. That's one thing that comes up with photographers a lot is if you are moving location from location to location, if you're getting ready at a hotel and then your ceremony is down the road at the venue, pack before. Everything that you're going to need to take with you, have a bag at the door ready to go so that when your photo session is over, when prep is over, you're not scrambling saying, I have to remember this, that, and the other. Be organized the day of. It, the, the less you can do the day of the wedding, the better your experience will will be, I would imagine. Correct. I mean, another advice that I, I give my, my brides is that the bridal party is there for a reason. They're just not there to be part of, of, of the Photos. wedding. You know, delegate jobs to them. That's what they're there for, to help you out. So that's the day of your wedding. You don't need to worry about your suitcase or your purse or your phone, anything like that. These are jobs that you should just tell one person, this is what you're in charge of. And that's it. And that way you don't, you know, the bride doesn't have to worry about any of these things for on her wedding day. Smart. So we talked about prep. Let's talk about the reception. Sometimes couples will have their crew, photographers, videographers, leave a little bit earlier in the evening. Do you think that that's okay to do? When is a good time to be able to leave if they're looking to save on cost? Or do you think that that's a shame and it should be coverage should be kept until the very end. I well I believe coverage should be kept till the end. I mean there's so many things that happen throughout the reception. Um you know everyone is in a better mood and things are happening all throughout the night. And these are these are moments where people are maybe taking pictures with their cell phones, but it's not the same quality, it's not the same image you're going to receive as having myself or any other professional photographer capture these moments. Great point. And People what are in a better mood? I love that. <laughs> so true. <laughs> um, Carlos, I'm I'm curious what your feeling is on uh, having or not having a second photographer with you. I mean, it's really difficult. Obviously, uh, you know, people are, you know, paying for planning these, having to come up with all this money. I should say in a year or two, and um, sometimes they just just can't afford it. But I really want to know what your take on that is. Are the shoots much less creative, in your opinion, when it's it's just you, you don't have somebody working with you? I mean, having one photographer, it's like watching a movie with just one camera. It's it, ha- it hasn't been done before. Sure, it has. But can you t- can you tell the story, you know, the, the way it's supposed to be told with just one camera? It, it's not going to happen. And give me an example specifically of that. Talk about this this one one image that they want, you know, talk about the difficulties you would experience, um, giving them that shot without somebody present to to assist you. Yeah. I mean, there are shots that I've taken that couples love and they're like, I love this shot. I I need to have this shot. And and it is possible for me to recreate it because it's, it's in within a controlled environment, but I need help. I, I need an assistant or a second photographer to help me with the light. Because there's just no way for me to set up the light and be able to take the shot, especially when we need to get out of the church. Let's just say, for example, there's a shot in the church that they want, and we have one minute to get out of the church because, you know, there's a mass that's going to start in a, in a couple minutes. Um, without having help, a second photographer to assist me with the light, and it's, that shot's just not going to happen because I can't position the light in a certain angle and expect it to be spot on for that shot. I mean, if I did it by myself, I'd have to take a shot, adjust the light, come back, take it, do it again. And it's, I got to do it multiple times. Now, if I have an assistant, I can just direct them to say, turn the light this way, turn the light that way. We got the shot. Let's go. I love that. Now, that's really important for couples to understand. And and it's, it's of course, it's, it's giving us a different perspective too. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I like how you described it, control, taking, taking something and, and, creating something out of it, you know, controlling that space and, um, and yeah, having, having that other person there to, to help you do that, uh, so that they could ultimately get what they want is, is, is really important for, for them to understand. I hate it when, when I'm only securing one person and and I tell them, I say, I say to them, I, you know, if there's any way that we can make this happen, even down the line, let's try to do it. It's well, that's 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 a good point because I know a lot of couples are working on a budget and sometimes they're like we can't afford a second photographer, but um, for me having having a second photographer and coming up with the money is 
is so important. And it's not because maybe we're trying to upsell them or get more money out of them. No, it's about being able to tell their story properly mm-hmm. and the best way. I mean, ha- you know, not having the groomsmen, let's say, you know, their their morning covered. You know, what what are you going to remember? Um, oh, yeah, we, we got dressed. But no, there, there are memories that are happening there that we're, we can't capture and that they're not going to remember 15, 20 years down the road. Mm-hmm. That's right. And just different ways to capture one moment, like something like the first look. There's a lot of things going on in that single moment. You know, the anticipation that he's feeling and then how she's feeling as she's approaching him. That's just two perspectives right there. Definitely. I mean, with one photographer, you can't capture all the emotions that are going on on the first look. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd have to do multiple takes. Now, on the second take, the emotions, those initial like, emotions eh. are not going to be there because mm-hmm. you, you just went through a, a, a you know, a, a run of it. And, you know, you, you're not going to grab her. You're not going to look at her the same way as you did on the first look. So, And that's an excellent point that we, you know, I, because we always get from our couples, we don't want this to feel staged and we don't want this to feel like it's not authentic. And, you know, sometimes you have to do it over again if, if, if you want to get that look, right? But yeah. you're going to lose the authenticity. Yep. Mm-hmm. And also, let's talk about first looks for a second, Mm -hmm. because a handful of our couples refuse in their hearts to do a first look because they've dreamt, and I understand, seeing their husband for the first time as they're walking down the aisle. But what I will say from this, from my own experience at my wedding, I didn't plan on doing a first look. We got married in the church, and I didn't even think when I booked the church that it didn't give me enough time leaving the church to go to our cocktail hour. And it did. It was stacked one event to the next event. So the photographer strongly encouraged us to do a first look. And I was reluctant, but I took her advice. Those are truly my favorite moments, my favorite photos of the entire day. And the reason is, in retrospect, as you're walking down the aisle, you have so many different emotions happening at the same time. You're nervous. People have flown in to see you that you haven't seen in years. You're trying to be polite and connect with them. You're also trying to make the connection with your husband. And it's a diluted moment because there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. So if you would give yourself the permission to do that when you do have the time and you don't have the distractions and have that photographed, I think that there's so much value to be said in that, uh, that, that people dismiss just because they think the first time has to happen down the aisle. I think it's great to do it in advance, have it isolated. And I always tell couples, it's the only five minutes that you'll have alone together. That's right. For the day. Like you have constant attention around you. It's a very pure moment. And I never personally, I just always looked at it as a very, this logistically makes sense. But Natasha and I have had this conversation. And when she, you know, put it that way, I said, because I did not have a first look. She did. And I said, oh, you know, that that makes so much sense because, you know, when you're about to walk down the aisle, you really aren't. I mean, at least I wasn't 100 percent focused on what was ahead. I was I was uh, very aware of, you know, my entire audience and who's looking at me. Is my hair okay? You know, oh, my God, is she there? Oh, there's Janine, you know, like different. Oh, great. Okay, there's John. You know, so it's just like getting that focus, I don't think you get it as much unless you have that first look moment. And you get to talk. I, I'll never yeah. forget what he said to me when he when he saw me for the first time. He he said, you look like a doll. You just look like a doll. And I'll keep that with me for the rest of my life. Oh my God, how cute. Where had I walked to the front uh, in, in front of an entire group of people, he's, you know, how weird is that if he starts to we start up a conversation in front of the church you know <laughs> so it was an isolated moment we got some private time and it was fo- it was also you look like a doll forever. oh my god my conversations were so different I was like I'm gonna give you a lemon because I know you're not gonna cry so we need we need to make people think you <laughs> know that lemon. this is is that an onion what does what does a lemon a do lemon you know just get your whatever a lemon, lemon onion what is a lemon <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> right <laughs> It makes my eyes dear. <laughs> so if you're planning a wedding in one location, do a first look. Do yourself the favor. <laughs> Schedule a first look. Uh, Here, here's the other thing. A first look. I mean, 
I always let my couples know too. So look, you're, you're spending a lot of money on the venue. About 20% of what you're spending is cocktail hour. You know, do you want to lose 20% of what you're spending on your venue? No. Ooh, that's a good point. You know, take part of it. That's the best food of the day. You want to be there mingling with your guests. And, you know, the first look, as you got, as your lady said, it's great because you have a moment to yourself. And those feelings that he was going to have initially seeing you walk down the aisle, he's still going to have those feelings. Th those emotions are still going to be there. He better still have those feelings. And if he doesn't, then you <laughs> squirt him with the lemon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think um, biggest regrets are definitely timing, timing, timing for the wedding timing day. Timing is everything. Yes. And also not being able to spend enough time with the guests that have put their time and effort. I think most couples walk away from their wedding going, oh, they feel so guilty that they didn't really get to make their rounds and get around to see everybody. So cocktail hour is actually an, giving you an extra full hour <laughs> to, ca to catch up with everybody that, that's giving you their time on your wedding day. So definitely. That's a good point. Um, I just made, I just made a point and <laughs> complimented myself on that one. <laughs> so, we haven't talked about engagement sessions yet. So engagement sessions, yay, nay. If you have a certain budget to work with and, you know, you're, you're stretching that dollar so far, do you force yourself to do an engagement session? Is it worth it? Why or why not? It's definitely worth it. And, and one of the big reasons is that you get to connect with the photographer on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And it's just, it's just the couple and, and myself. Now this day, you know, we we get to we get to chat, we get to know each other a little bit better, we get to have fun taking photos and really just relax and capturing, you know, those 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 uh, those emotions they have with each other. And it's practice for the wedding. So everything that we do that day, the majority of those poses, and it's going to happen again on the wedding, and they know already how to get to those. That's those positions, key. which Getting is great to know yourself in front of the camera yeah. as well. I think even outside of the photographer and the energy, just getting to know yourself. Sometimes have you ever taken a photo in you being on the other side of the camera? You think you look so good. And Never. then you take a look at the, <laughs> and, and then you take a look at the photo and it looks horrible. Okay. You know, like, I love what you just said that we have, I have something with a girlfriend called ugly face. So it's when you sorry, just wake up and, you know, or you think you look good and then you just take a picture. You think you look good. And it was like the most horrendous, connected horrible. moment. And then you look at it and you either look mean, mad or goofy. And yeah, you know. like your pores are huge. Like, why does my nose look massive? But here you go, you know. That's right. <laughs> this is what my husband is seeing. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think getting to know yourself, because you can self-correct. If you were to see some photos after the, they've been taken, and I don't advise looking at your the photo, the photographer's camera throughout the wedding day. Stay on task. Be in the moment, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, th throughout a wedding day, I'll definitely share some pictures um, with my couples and that gets them excited. They're sure. like, wow, we look beautiful in this picture. Look at us. That's us. They can't believe it. And that just puts I them I did in. not have that experience. No, I, well, I, I, I mean, I had. You should have hired me. No. That's hysterical. I mean, I had an engagement session and it was so fun. It was so fun. I, I, I honestly, it's, it was one of the best parts of the whole process for me. That's great. And then you have those pictures. It truly warmed, forever. it warmed us up. Yeah, Definitely. I have a question that's a little off the topic of an, of an engagement session, but I don't want to forget. Do you scout locations? Do you I do. Okay. Is that super important for you to do? It definitely is because, I mean, there's a lot of locations that I've shot. So, you know, we show up and I know exactly where to go. But other locations that I've never shot at, what, I mean, there's some locations that obviously I just can't get to because of just the distance, anything like that. But I mean, we have the internet, we have Google, um, we have tons of pictures out there that if I can get to them physically, I do my research and make sure I know I have a plan. So when I arrive, I, I know exactly where to go. If not, if there's certain locations that I, I just couldn't find, whatever it is, I'm asking the venue, you know, what are the key spots here that, you know, we should take advantage of. Okay. So you think scouting a location is, or even uh, Googling a venue is just as effective? 
for you if you can't get there? If I can't get, I mean, it's the best thing. The, you know, the second best, yeah. right? Okay. I mean, but you know, for, for the most part, if 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 I get to a location, I have an idea because I'm scouting already. You know, I'll get there earlier, um, if if I can, and uh, just check out some spots real quick. And in my head, I see the shots before I take them. Because that's a question that we get a lot um, from our clients, and you know, we'll, they'll ask me. Um, you know, we really love Carlos's work. Has he been to the space? Um, and if you have not been to the space, you know, I'll tell them no, he hasn't been to the space. He'll scout the location, but I don't want that to deter them, because I always felt like, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a good photographer, just like if you're a good singer. You know, you can sing in the shower, you can sing in a stadium. You know, if you're a good photographer, you can shoot anywhere. I mean, unless that's not the case, but. No, I mean, you know, it, again, looking at, you know, at any photographer's portfolio should yeah. give you an idea of, of, of their work and, um, you know, how, how, you know, how ready is that photographer for any, for any location to come up? I mean, I've shot photos in a parking lot because it was the best location at this venue. And wow, you Where know, did they get married Walmart. Oh God. I, 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 for, I forgot the location, but <laughs> the parking lot is the best. Of what it was the work. best location because there was about, I don't know, 25 people in the bridal party total. And it's the only spot that they fit, but you know, having the right equipment made it look good. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. I'm killing me. <laughs> uh, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so don't edit that out let's be real do you think it's reasonable do you think it's reasonable to a, for a couple to insist you scout a location i mean if if they really on your own time do you think that you should be compensated for it what do you think uh i mean i'm, I'm shooting their wedding and if they really want it done then I'll, I'll do it for them, <laughs> you know, but again, for the most part, it's, you know, I, I can show up to a lot, you know, I mean, I, I've done it in the past where I've shot at locations where I haven't even been and I didn't scout for whatever reason it was. Maybe it's a last minute thing. Um, and we, we, we still get great images, you know, and again, it's that time factor thing, having the time to get around that whatever location we're at. You know, do we have the time to go from one location to another one within that venue? Um, you know, and then we'll get them. It's it's not for me. It's never been an issue. The issue has always been timing. Um, really quick. I'm a recap person. <laughs> I like to get to the point and and really focus in on what's necessary. So recapping what you're looking for in a photographer. If you, let's say you were getting married again to your beautiful wife and you were in an area where you knew none of the photographers, so you were getting married in California and you were interviewing photographers, give us your five top questions that you would ask that photographer. Okay. Knowing what I know now? No. Nope. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. no. Not knowing what not I know knowing. now. Oh, man. You're That's taking tough. me back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he can't unknow what he knows. But I'm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm thinking more it, it, helpful to a, to a bride who maybe doesn't have the technical, you're going to talk equipment and, you know, things like that. Or um, maybe when, what do you, I guess, what do you wish your couples would ask you, right? Or like, what, what do you wish they would be aware of or have a little bit more knowledge of? I mean, I, I think knowing first, well, first of all, the first thing that you look for are the images. You're looking at the images. You're like, okay, do I like this style of, of photography? Um, you know, and that's, that's basically like your first connect to a photographer. Um, now we have reviews on the knot on Google. That's oh. another thing I would look at. Um, the experience yeah. working with them. What's, what are people saying about him? Um, maybe contact some of these folks. And a, a lot of this may be referral-based, so you may know someone who's shot with that photographer. You know, how is he? Um, what's his personality? Um, is he is he cool to, to, you know, is he a cool person? Or is he, like, stressful? Or is he someone that's, you know, just, you know, doesn't give you a great experience throughout the day? Um, the other thing also would be, you know, knowing... It's tough for me not to even say this, but knowing his equipment, because 
for me, it's it's important to to for any photographer to know their equipment, um, just because again, any any circumstances can can happen throughout the day. What happens if you know your ca- one camera breaks? Do you have backup? So that's a really good. That's that's a big that's, novice question. That's to ask. definitely a big thing right there. Yeah, does uh, does any photographer do they have a backup camera? Do they have backup to their backup? You know, lighting wise, do they have backup to the lighting? Um, are they backing up their images in their camera? You know, two card slots. It's it, that that's debatable, but for me, it's important to have backup when I'm shooting a wedding. Yeah, even backup of the photographer to have a plan in place. That's what the other happens? thing. That's where a second photographer comes in place, right there. So, God forbid, you're shooting a wedding, and and it's happened where the lead photographer gets sick or gets hurt. What happens at that point? You know, you have your second photographer that can cover at that point. And so definitely backup on a wedding day is key. You know, backup through for everything is key. Uh, okay. So just again, to recap, uh, style, uh, uh, reviews, and equipment. Equipment. Um, I'm Feeling. Feeling. Feeling of, of, do you guys mesh well? That also, yeah, personality. Personalities, which ties into the engagement session where you get to really get a sense Definitely. of that with your photographer. Um, I, I, I asked this question sort of, but I want to just go back really, really quick to the style thing. Um, if you had to, you know, I guess differentiate for me between just a, a couple of different styles, just keep it very basic. What would what would you say? Like, teach me about that because when couples are 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 looking at these portfolios, I'm just gonna say it. Sometimes they'll say to me, "It all they're all amazing, but it all looks the same." I get that all the time. So you know, if if we're just gonna to, gonna get to it, explain to me like like how you know how how do you differentiate? How does one differentiate when they're looking at a portfolio and they can say, "Well, this person does this. This person predominantly does this." Like, how does that work? You know, for me, what, one of the biggest things is is light that we spoke about before. So, you know, a lot of couples, and I've heard this in the past, where their photographer doesn't want to shoot 12 noon because because of the light, the way the light sits over your head. I've never shied away from that. You know, for me, that's that's a big part of, of, of my images, you know, again, using hard light um, or how to work with that type of lighting. So for me, my style is... Is really what's given to me throughout the day. Let's say on a summer, summer, summer wedding where the lighting is just hard and blazing, and you know, so I use that to my advantage. I've 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 learned how to work with that style of lighting now. Um, and if, what does that come out aesthetically looking different than if you're doing a, a four o'clock cloudy day shot? I mean, the, the shadows are more defined, um, but also having off camera light is is a big thing when when you're dealing with that type of light high noon one o'clock um sun so being able to bring in additional lighting and use that where a second photographer would also come into play here because they're holding the light and we're able to get through these shots really quick um so that type of shot would be something that you would see maybe uh in 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 a high fashion magazine Mm -hmm. because again that's what they use they use a lot of hard light in those magazines that's so funny that you say that because when i look at your portfolio Mm -hmm. it looks like it is right out of a magazine yep vogue (laughs) your couples yep are instilled with confidence i they are regular brides and grooms they have no experience modeling but you wouldn't know that they look like they've been doing this their entire lives. And so you have this high fashion sense about your work contrasted with these very real emotional moments. And I like that because it's not one particular style you can peg. You're not putting yourself in a corner. You're really opening yourselves up saying, what do we got to work with? And let's make it happen. Let's create some art and real moments as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a bright and airy type of shooter, um, I can be if the if the uh, if the day calls for it, then that's what I'm shooting. Um, you know, if if it's overcast, then I'm using that to soften it up, make the picture a little softer. Um, if it's dark, then I'm bringing in my own lights and and creating. You know, I have a little bit more flexibility as to what I want to create because now I'm introducing my my own lights for this shot. So, um, you know, it's it, I'm I've never been one to follow trends. 
maybe when I first started, I did because I was trying to learn. But now it's it's really whatever the day is giving me. I I have I have whatever feeling I have is is what I'm creating. Um, well, that's so, important yeah. to shy away from trends because those trends might be cool now, but 30 years from now, you don't want to be embarrassed of your wedding photos. You want to be, you want them truly to be timeless. No, I mean, following trends is just going to make you like the next photographer, you know, and that's what I, I, I don't want to be. I want to be myself. And when I started out in photography, everyone that I looked up to would say, oh, you know, you need to find your look. You need to find your way. And I'm like, how do you do this? Like, you know, if I'm shooting like this person or this other person, you know, how do I get to my look? And I never understood that up until recently where I had people tell me, you know, I knew that was your photo without even reading. I was Husha. just going to say that about you. You may not be conscious of your own voice because you are so open minded, but you definitely have a voice that comes out in your work. I can tell a Carlos wedding in an instant just by the angles you use, I can tell it by the lighting. I can tell it by the confidence that your couples have in the photos. And you have a, a cool ability that things are structured without looking structured. If that makes sense. That's a really yeah. good way no. to put it. Yeah. You're, you're not the perfect, perf, perfect, perfect, uh, <laughs> symmetrical type of photographer. And those photographers exist. And we have some of them on, you know, as, as part of our photographers here. Uh, some people want perfect symmetry in their photos. Others don't. don't. And you have this ability where things look planned and neat. They're not messy. They're very neat, but they still look natural and and like the, the spur of the moment. So kudos to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank for you. That. I mean, for, for me, I love playing. Um, I have all types of lenses. I have really wide lenses. I have lenses that are really telephoto. Um, and I love playing with everything. I mean, I, I have some shots that probably most people wouldn't take because, you know, my couples or my brides look like giants in the picture. And it's because of a, the lens that I'm mm -hmm. using and the angle that I'm taking. But for me, it's giants in a good way, in a good Not way. Giant, yeah. we, <laughs> <laughs> no, giants know. in an attractive way. <laughs> and again, it's it's about telling the story from a different perspective. It's it's giving them an angle that they're not used to seeing, but still they can still relate to what's happening in that photo and remember. And, you know, in their eyes, maybe they're not looking the, at the photo the same way I'm, I was thinking about that photo when I took it, but they're seeing the reactions on their faces. And that's to them is the connection that they're making with that photo. But not for me, I'm looking at two aspects, the, the connection between whoever's in that, in that photo, but also the artistic side of it and just giving them something a little different. Uh, we haven't talked about post-production. What goes on after the wedding? So how involved should a couple be in the post-production process? You know, each photographer has their own turnaround time. You know, it could be a few couple of weeks. It could be a couple of months. You know, everybody has their own uh, turnaround time, which is an important question to ask when you're meeting with a photographer is when, when should you expect your yeah. photos? And that should be listed in the contract as well that you would sign is, is delivery time. But, um, you know, which photos and editing the look of the image, how involved should couples be in that? I think the couple should, should see that from their work that the reason why they chose the, you know, this photographer they should see their work and know that whatever they're they're looking at on their portfolio on their website, that's what they should expect in return. Um, I don't think a couple should let the the photographer know. Listen, I want you to change this to a light and airy, if it's dark image, you know, or if they want a certain look, because at that point, then you know they're not trusting the photographer's vision, or you know they hired this photographer for a certain look. You know, and you should trust your photographer to know that you're going to get that look in return. You know, don't take them out of their comfort zone because at that point, you know, you hired them for the wrong for the wrong reasons. What are some acceptable things that you would advise couples? What are some things that they can ask and request that are perfectly normal? Um, I mean, like for me, the the images that are ending up, let's say, on a large print or in the albums. And the couples are maybe asking for 
to clean up an image, maybe take out an exit sign or some little distraction that's that's in a photo. I think that's perfectly acceptable for a couple to ask. Um, but if they want to change one person and pop in someone else or do something <laughs> that's and it's happened in the past, we've we've had it happen. That's completely unacceptable because at that point, it's you, you're 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 at, it's not going to look like it was taken. It, you know, at that point, it's just going to it's going to look photoshopped. And it, I mean, keeping it real for a second, because that's what I do. Um, I, <laughs> I had I had a bride text me yesterday. Um, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. She sends me a message. Uh, it was a, it was a picture. Uh, and you can see it, the cinematographer in the middle of the aisle. She sends me another picture where the couple was coming down the aisle and you can see must have obviously was two photographers. You could see the photographer in front of them as they were, were walking down the aisle. And she had recently booked with us. And she said, Jeannie, please tell me that your team does not do this. This is horrible. I'm I'm, I'm so sorry that this is 7 a.m., but I'm working and I won't be able to text you the rest of the day. And I'm going to obsess over this. So an- answer me when you can, right? So, I, of course, you know, I reassured her. But um, do you run into those issues? Like, ha- you know. Yeah, I mean. Here at here at, at at LPS, I mean, we we got such a great vibe between the photographers and the and the cinematographers that we know. And we're not trying to sell you people. This is real. No, we do. No, this is this is the absolute truth. We know exactly where to be when when the action's happening, walking down the aisle. Now, am I going to say that you know we haven't had some of our crews in the shot? No, I mean it's we need to get our shot, and sometimes a crew is in the shot, but we always do our best to make sure that you know we we're out of everyone's shot it's minimized yeah, greatly it's, it's just because of the synergy and should that happen because you brought up we're, we're really talking about post process here could that be fixed potentially in, in post in it the post could process? be fixed um but if it's too too complex it's not going to look right as a in the in, in the final image that's right one crazy request that we had uh for post-production we had a we had a bride <laughs> dislike her venue so greatly she asked if we could take her ballroom <laughs> shot of, of her and her husband is it her and her husband or she and her husband them um, i don't know of them and put them in a different venue and she <laughs> sent a picture of it's this true. other venue with a piano and our post-production team pulled it off they wow. pulled it off i mean this was wow. a this is completely out of the norm uh, but she requested it and and <laughs> choose your venue wisely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> there was a lot of work that went into that one photo. And and it was costly too. You know, it's a lot of time went into creating that for them. Wow. It may have been easier for her just to rent that venue for like an hour and have pictures taken there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um that's that's insane. Um, you know, again, just like you said, choose your your venue wisely because <laughs> mm-hmm. Why would I don't understand why you would want a picture of another venue when you you had nothing to do with that venue on your wedding day? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. We felt the same. <laughs> um. So, how do you feel about someone else editing your photos? How do you how how involved do you want to be in the process of editing? You know how and how linked is it when you're taking a photo? Are you also thinking this is how this is how Always. it's going to be edited Always. later? Okay. Yeah. Um, before I take any picture in, in my head, I see the final already. Okay. And that's I sh- cool. And I shoot for that kind of look. So, um, you know, it, so it's if, so connected. Yeah. I mean, if I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a black and white, then I shoot for, to make it a black and white. If it's going to be color, if it's going to be bright, whatever it is, I shoot for that kind of look. Great. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I'm taking that in. <laughs> And it's it that that's taken me a while to to get to to really understand. And again, it's really understanding the technical side of of taking a photo, and seeing the the final product in before your, it's even yeah, there. Before, yeah, before yeah. That's very true. So, in recap, when you're looking at a photographer's portfolio, this is a very true and strong indication of of the type of photos that you're going to get for your wedding day. Definitely. Right? I mean, you, you're looking at their work. You know, you're going to get something that's similar to. You're not going to make a seeing. round peg into a square peg. No, it's, it is what it is. You're yeah. not. I always use the example of you're not having like a Spielberg turn into Ron Howard. Yeah. Spielberg is Spielberg. 
Ron Howard is Ron Howard, Tim Burton is Tim Burton, and they're their own artists. So choose wisely your photographer as well. Definitely. Look at their photo. And also one point that we we didn't bring up yet um, is look at a full wedding that a photographer has shot as well. Because when you're looking at a photographer's portfolio, you're seeing a compilation of multiple weddings that they have shot because they want to show you different seasons that they've shot, different cultures that they've shot, how they handle prep, how they handle different parts of the day, group shots, candids. So make sure that you request one full wedding that that photographer has shot so that you can see the story in it and how it developed. Definitely. I mean, for the most part, most weddings, you know, a lot of things are that happen are the same. I mean, bride prep, you know, uh, ceremonies um, and the reception. A lot of those things, like the candid shots, we're capturing what's happening. Um, but those particular shots with during portrait session, that's where we kind of have a little bit more fun having the time. And that's we can where get, your voice really comes Yeah, out. that's where we can get a little bit more creative. So that's your favorite chapter of the day, would you say? Mm, or not necessarily? No, the entire day is is my favorite part of a wedding. I mean, I I, I love capturing the emotions of a bride and, and a groom before they even see each other, mm -hmm. um, getting ready with their bridal party. You know, there's a lot of tears, there's a lot of mm -hmm. hugs, there's a lot of love going on. And I love capturing that. And sometimes I'll stick myself in the bathroom and crack the door and just shoot. And they won't even know that I'm there. They'll forget that I'm there. And I'm just capturing things that are creepy. happening. Yeah, it is a little creepy, but they love it. <laughs> <laughs> in the groom in the shower, you're creeping into the bathroom. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so one thing that comes up a lot when we're meeting with, with our couples is I try to tell them <laughs> <laughs> that we're laughing already over here. <laughs> it's a, it's a fine line that the photographer is working with the day of in trying to give you these beautiful photos that you will truly love in years to come, but also making you feel and look beautiful. Because let's face it, when it comes down to it, if you don't like the way you look in a photo, you're going to delete it and blame the photographer. So nothing else matters <laughs> after that. Nothing else matters. I mean, you, I get it as a girl. You that's know. right. But you do want to see the wider, the, the brighter, the, the bigger picture, <laughs> the wider, bright. You want to see the bigger picture. So Take, for example, you have a, a photo where you need your entire wedding party present. You have eight people on her side, 10 people on his side, the two of you, a couple flower girls. You know, you have a lot of people. You're talking like 20 plus people in a shot. Is it, you know, it, photographer at this point is going to focus on the environment, the landscape, and getting everybody to look uniform and natural. Right. But you can't guarantee everyone is going to like their own smile in like, the picture. So you need yeah. to be a little bit more realistic. About like this. how, how are, okay. Yes. How aware are you of, of this when you're like, does, does it ever take precedence over the way that she's looking and he's looking? Does that take precedence over the whole overall image in, in that very moment, moment for you? I mean, my, my thing at that point, I, I'm always positioning the couple first, you know, putting them in, in whatever position it is. And then, eyes at me. Now at this point I'm taking at least three, four, five pictures just because everyone's, someone's blinking, someone's looking to the side. Now having uncle Bob to my right with his cell phone, trying to take a picture at the same time drives me crazy. You know, I never used to say, Hey, uh, do me a favor. You know, I never say anything to them, but now I know the importance of, of this one photo I need to take and having People, you know, to my right and to my left with cell phones, all eyes are going to be looking at them and not at me. It happens at every wedding. So, you know, I always tell Uncle Bob and Aunt Mary, put your cell phones down. You'll get your picture after I'm done. I'll set it up for you. And they, say that with an attitude. Put your uh, cell phone down. Put your cell phone <laughs> down right now and let me get, get my shot. When we're ready. <laughs> no. no, I always have fun with them. I, I, you know, I bring them into that, into that moment and tell them, say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to set this photo up for you so that way you can get your best picture. And then they're happy. They put their phones down and then they're pointing at me. So everyone's looking at me at that point, I can get my shot and then they can get theirs. And I'm pointing my finger at whoever's taking the picture at this point so they can get their shot. You ever get some like crazy family members that are just like in your business? I, like I, I just, <laughs> yes, I had this one wedding. It was on the beach 
Um, was it a mother? No, it was, I, I think it was an uncle. Um, and Uncle Bob. Yeah, it was an Uncle Bob. <laughs> and the son, the son was, I don't know, it was about one o'clock, two o'clock. And the son was like, it was up there. So <sighs> obviously I don't want, you know, my couples or whoever's taking part of this photo to face the son. I want the son behind them because I'm not, I'm going to get squinty eyes. So I positioned them the way I'm supposed to. And here comes Uncle Bob. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, have them turn around. The sun is behind them. I was like, no, it's like, do me a favor. Enjoy the wedding. Let me do my job mm-hmm. and go back. But this to, is a reality, guys. This happens. This, this happens, happens a lot. Time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. I've had people tell me how to do my job where I'm like, um, you know, I was hired for a reason. You're here for a reason is to enjoy the wedding. Go do that and let me do my job. Good. So you, you, yeah. you're you assertive when you need to be. I Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I feel bad because maybe I'm coming off and, and maybe a, too strong, a, too or... strong sometimes. But, you know, at, at those moments, I don't have time because we're we're running out of time for these yeah. photos. You don't have time to think about I, that. I can't it's for explain the couple. myself. Yeah. It's like, OK, move on and let me do my thing. And More valuable it. to the couple. Yeah. Or if not having my second shooter, they're setting up a shot or they're telling people to stay away. You know, because at that at that point in time, I need to make a decision, as you know, as far as timing, how quick do we need to get through this to get to the next part of the day? And what about large groups? Do you need to know names? Do you need do you need somebody next to you, you know a what, family member that says, OK, that's Mike, that's that's Ashley. That's to help you, you know, get through the roundups. Having the bride and groom create a shot list with names is so beneficial for the day, because at that point I can have you know, a family member helped me out with this point. And they love it too, because they're, they're, they're taking part of this important day. And I'm, you know, I let them know, listen, here's the list. You know, the people that are here, do me a favor, call them out and help me out with this shot. And for the most part, they're always listening to the family member. And I ask for someone who's loud and has a big mouth because that, you know, they can, they can project their voice a lot better than I can. Um, so that definitely helps out and gets me to the point that I need to you know, take that shot and go on to the next So you one. use somebody on board with them to help you facilitate yeah. because they know who everybody is. Yeah, that, it's usually, you know, maid of honor. Um, you know, she's there for a reason. And okay. I, if she's not she doing it, she has a job. And if she's not doing her job, then I, I, I give her a job. Great. Our production team is, they rock too. We have a, we have a, a couple of ladies that produce all of our weddings and they get right to the point with who's in the shots, what, you know, what shots are the must have, so that you don't end up with your wedding photos and say, how did I miss a shot of my grandmother and I? No, you know, no there are weddings where, you know, we may not get a shot list because the bride and groom just didn't supply it to us, you know. Um, and at that point, you know, we do our best to make sure we get everything as far as all the, the different combinations. Mm-hmm. But having that shot list is so essential for that part of the day, because if not, we're, we're wasting a lot of time trying to figure out who's missing, who, you know, who did we get, who didn't we get? And, you know, having and that shot list, we can just check it off. I would imagine if something's missing, the blame, everybody always wants to blame someone, the blame is going to be on you. So it if you is, can yeah. get the communication done properly before the wedding in preparation for the wedding, then, then all the, the marks will be hit. And also realistic saying, okay, you've given us, you know, a hundred people to photograph and you've given us 20 minutes. Let's be yeah. realistic. No. <laughs> you know, it's not enough time. So our, our production team, that's where they get involved and they are super methodical. They're, they're me- meticulous about, you know, what to expect on the wedding day, how to prepare for the wedding day, which is so valuable to, you know, so that you don't get to the wedding day and, and not think of common things that will, will come up. You have realistic goals. And just, uh, reiterating this this idea of realistic goals, Carlos, um, it could take a, a couple of minutes just to set up a shot, correct? Yeah. One shot. No, yeah, because, I mean, I've had shots where we've had 30, 40 people in the shot, and everyone wants to talk and congratulate the couples, which is always expected. Um, but I always tell my couple, I'm like, look, you can tell them that you'll talk to them later. Just let's get the shot, get it over with, mm-hmm. and everyone can go eat and That's go right. talk, and, you know, they're done. Right. Don't do a receiving line. Yeah. Get those checks later. That's where having, you know, the first look, getting these photos done before, not during cocktail. Because if you're you're taking all these photos during cocktail, you're going to have some angry family members because they want to go eat. 
They're hungry and they want. And that's just life. I mean, the natural progression is you've just tied the knot. Now go celebrate. Go enjoy it. Yeah, to, to 20%. 20%. Hold, yeah. And to hold that energy and continue with a photo session, that just seems against the grain of what you're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. Right then. Carlos, how important is it to, in your opinion, for a couple to just hire a professional Talk just a professional photographer. Specifically wedding photographer. Yeah. Somebody who's used to doing live, spontaneous events. It's so important. I mean, if I've had couples where they they tell me, well, you know, we, we can't afford, we can't afford you. Um, you're out of our budget. So, you know, we, we found or we found someone that's going to do our photos mm -hmm. that's a family member or a friend, mm -hmm. you know. Or, or it, they, they took my friend's pictures for their wedding or yeah. we, and things then, like that. Yeah. At that point, I, I'm, I asked them questions I'm like, well, you know, have they done this, you know, many times? Is this what they do every week or, you know, what's their experience? And at this point, I'm trying to educate the couple as to what questions to ask because, um Having an experienced photographer versus a non-experienced photographer on a wedding, you know, you have one time to get that shot. And if you're not ready to, to get the shot, then, you know, this is where an experienced photographer is able to deal with any situation that comes up on a wedding day. And if you have a non-experienced photographer, and I've seen this where they don't know how, how to change whatever settings they need to mm -hmm. change on their camera or be at a certain position um, they just for, don't have that the wedding, experience. They're going to gonna lose that mm -hmm. shot. So when the first kiss happens and they're not where they should be, what are you going to do? You're going to have them stop and go back and do it over again? No, you lost that moment. You know, you you you're not going to tell them to to do it over. It's over and done with. So, you know, all these all these uh, events that happen throughout the day, most likely an inexperienced photographer is probably not going to capture mm -hmm. the way it should be captured. So how important is it for you for you to know and have worked with the people that you've shot weddings with before? It's it's so important. I mean, having having a relationship with our crew, I mean, we do this every week. So we know exactly where we should be when we're taking our shots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if we're taking one shot or if we're setting up a shot and I'm doing my my, you know, my photos and mm -hmm. the video crew is capturing something that's happening in the other room, you know, I'll leave it set up for them so that way they can come in. Oh. And they're they're getting their shots right away. They don't have to recreate or, you know, move so, the dress around or anything like that. It's set up for them. So, you know, we're saving a lot of time when when it so comes give to those me, shots. So give me a, a specific example of that. You're in the room. You're, you're getting shots of the dress. You're leaving it a certain way because you know that that's how they're also going to be yeah. filming it. Is, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that could be one. And one thing that comes to my mind, it'll, uh, going back to time, time being an issue. So, um the bride's running late and we need to capture her getting into her gown, having the mother help her with her gown, having her sister help her put on shoes, whatever it is. And we have five minutes to capture all mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. You know, what I typically do is I have video position themselves and let them get their shots because I know I can capture these shots. With, it's easier for me to capture those shots with my camera than video. Video needs to set, set up a certain way so they can capture that where of me i can i can hold it one hand and i'm just taking pictures and uh, i can freeze those moments where video can't mm -hmm. can't work the same way that i'm working that's efficient yeah really efficient definitely yeah. now working with a team that you're not used to a team that i'm not used to i'd like to speak to them prior to the wedding mm -hmm. just to introduce myself and let them know that um you know i'm not competing for shots that day that were there for the couple and not every video crew works the same way. I mean, I've had some that have been great. You know, we work kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. But there's other crews where they just don't understand a photographer's side of, you know, um, they'll get in the shot. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll be where they shouldn't be. And this is where going back to kind of Photoshop and someone out of the shot where it's almost impossible to do, um, you know, they feel like they're, they're there just – you know, they're the only ones there shooting mm -hmm. that day and they're not considering a photographer's yeah. point of view. Having the knowledge of the other person's role and, and is, is key, I think. That and also experience is where experience mm -hmm. comes back into play. You know, you, you should you should know where to be um, or if not just communicating with the photographer and, you know, let's say, hey, I'm going to be over here and you'll be over here. All right, let's work it out. Let's get this done so that way we both get clean shots. I, I just couldn't understand how that wouldn't be such a priority. When I worked with the bride on Saturday and she came in, she's a musician. 
I just, I just related it because I'm a singer. So I just said to her, you know, how do you feel when you're, you know, you're going to a gig and you've never played with this person before? And then naturally, if you're a professional and you're hoping they're a professional and they read music, you know, we pray it's all going to go well. But you really don't know what you're walking into at the end of the day. No, because you, got, you have no rehearsal for yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's not and, comfortable. You know, personalities are different. I mean, some people more aggressive than others. Mm -hmm. um, their approach is completely different. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've had crews where there's like, three videographers in a room with me and I'm like, what's going on? Like why three videographers here? You know, I'm so used to maybe one or, you know, one all the time, but maybe two, but we know how to split up the work where we're not on top of each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. I see. I would imagine it's sort of like sharing the kitchen if you're trying to cook. Right. Yeah. So you have, you know, one stove, one sink, one prep area. So one person is covering this, one person is chopping. You would learn to work together in the space and share the space and still accomplish the same thing. Yeah. Now, it's such a big thing for, for a bride and, I mean, you know, a couple to really understand the dynamics between the photographer and the, and the, and the photo crew. Um, I love what we have here because, again, you know, we have a big crew here, but whoever shows up on the day of, of, of a wedding, you know, we, we've shot so many times in the past that we know what we, we know what to do, where to be, and how to get the shot efficiently and get to the next one. Um, so Carlos, I, we get a question a lot. Um, usually it's, it's a very uh, clients that will approach us in a very timid way. Cause they don't want to, you know, feel embarrassed. It, it'll, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about budgets and they want to know, um, how many meals they're going to be paying for. So they'll say, you know, um, should I feed my photographer? And, you know, <laughs> and then we laugh and then I say, yes, please feed them. Um, a hot meal, thank you. Uh, not not a sandwich, if that's okay. No. But um, <laughs> and the reason is, you just have to think. A, a, a wedding day is anywhere from eight hours to twelve, 12 hours, hours, sometimes longer. Yep. And you're on your feet, and you're a human being. You're an artist, but you're a human being. You should want your photographer and your crew to have a good meal so that they can continue to give you the amount of energy that's required mm -hmm. for your photos. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's a must providing a meal, also the timing of things. So there's a couple of opportunities, questions actually that come up with couples of, well, when are they eating? Because if you're eating, that would assume that you're not getting the coverage needed of them. And I think in my opinion, that the perfect time to eat would be while their guests are eating, because that's the most uneventful time of the entire reception watching people eat who needs pictures of that but if you quickly take 15 minutes to have yourself a meal during dinner that would be great but what oftentimes happens is the reception venues are feeding all of the guests then the guests are eating and then when the activities get up and running again then they serve the crew the meal when the crew that's when they should be photographed they should be photographing Correct, the guests yeah. so um, you know, if you're hearing this, yes, give your crew a great meal. Um, you know, th they give you a special price at the venue. You're not paying for their alcohol or anything. So it's a, it's a reduced rate. And also just let them know it's, it's in your best interest to feed them during dinner as your guests are eating. I think the best time for, for vendors in general to eat is when the couple is being served. Because at the same time, everyone can, can be eating and then... At that point, we what I typically do is I like to take the couple outside for some photos because they're not really doing anything at that point. There's nothing going on on the dance floor. There's no dancing, no partying at that point. Everyone is just eating. So it's a couple should strongly urge venues to serve their vendors um, when they're being served right mm -hmm. at the beginning. First, yeah. Yeah. They can yeah, eat quickly. Smart. And a lot of venues don't like to do it because they, they're, they're set up a certain way, but um, it's it's important for us to eat when the couple is eating. So that way we don't miss anything. Because a lot of times when things start happening, we get a notification, hey, uh, this is happening on the dance floor, you know, and then we need to stop eating or maybe not even get to the point that we've we've sat down to eat and we've got to start covering. And then at the end of the night, we, we didn't eat anything. And and um, just can you reiterate to me and to Natasha, uh, what what do you capture during cocktail hour? I get this question a lot too. I'm sure you eat a little bit and then, you know, how does that how Every does that couple work? is different. Or, I, or not. <laughs> yes. I mean, sometimes, it, I mean, during cocktail, there's two things that can happen. You know, either we're taking photos with family, portrait session, 
um, and we don't have time to capture a cocktail. And then, right, depending on the couple's plan. Yep. If they don't have a first look, then they're probably look. taking pictures during cocktail hour. Yep. But assuming that they had their first look, yep. then then what? Well, I always ask my couples, I'm like, how important is cocktail hour for you? Because everyone is just starving at that point. Everyone is eating. Like, do you want pictures of people eating? Do you want pictures of the food? What is it that you want captured during cocktail hour? Because really, if the couple is taking part of cocktail hour and they're mingling with mm-hmm. their guests at that point, that's great to capture some some candid shots of them with their guests. But most couples tell me they're like, I'm, you know, I don't know, capture a wide shot of the room. But does that shot end up you know, yeah, in, in, their in their album, album. Or it's, they it's don't even care. Like, r- really, it's, it's not a shot that they're going to, you know, hang up on the wall or right. even look back on. So, right. you know, most couples don't really care what happens in cocktail unless they're taking part of cocktail. Or That's, maybe if there's something very specific that, that they have at the cocktail hour. I'm saying this from experience where my husband wanted like an ice sculpture yeah. that they something yeah, I mean, capture. Yeah. Those, the I mean, ice sculptures, <laughs> like anything unique that stands out, we capture that. Right. But as far as like food being served, yeah, or, you know, it's, so mindset is important. Putting yeah. yourself in the couple's shoes, what memories are they actually going to yeah. want? Having, you know, hundreds of photos of food is is not what they're going to want. But utilizing that time and maybe going into the reception room, getting this pristinely decorated room before everybody's filled it up. Getting, like you mentioned, details, place card settings, flowers. Maybe calling the couple in yeah. to get some shots of them in this empty room dancing. Well, for you know, we, we need to set up for the reception. So during the cocktail hours, when we we go and set up our lights, make sure everything's up and running, and then um, testing out the uh, the lights, capturing details in the reception, and then bringing in the couple and capturing some shots of of, of them in the empty room that you know they they paid a ton of a ton of money for. So and a, a, another another good point is that again, couples. It's a long day and it's tiring going from one location to another, capturing photos, getting video done. Um, And then there are times when a couple might say, oh, no, we'll get that picture later. Nine times out of 10, you never get it because so many things are happening. So that take away. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. if if I advise my couples, let's get this now, you may not be up to it, but it's important that we get it now because we're not going to get it later. Thank you so much for sharing your day with us. You're yes. just such a wealth of knowledge. And, and thanks for sharing it Thank with us you. and everybody listening in. And thanks for having me in. Yes, the conversation was really, it was, it was awesome. Thanks a lot, Carlos. If anybody wants to check out his work, just please email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast. Ask us any questions you might have. This podcast has been produced by Kwali, Natalia Delgado, and Mark Falcon. Our editor is Nicole Palmetti. Music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. Until next time, bye. Happy planning.